Well, I'm originally from uh, Saskatoon, so I drove in this morning. Uh, I live across the road from where Ag in Motion is, the uh, outdoor farm show. Uh, I've been in the business for quite a few years, worked with Cargill at the time, did some pre inoculant coating with uh, polymers on pulses, and uh, Prior to this gig, I was working with Novozymes and Monsanto Biolag. So one of my roles with them was uh, application and and, uh, and treating with the biologicals. So uh, looking at some of the products that are coming to Canada, Rhodesian was a company that had some stuff registered. They had some really good stuff, so I quit the next day and started working for them. So it's been a really ex exciting uh, four years of looking at these products and develop developing them. So um, without further ado, I'll just get right into it. What Verdesian makes is kind of two different tiers uh, that's kind of relevant to Canada. Uh, pretty heavy on the biological side, so there's a few names that I'll go into in a bit. And then we also have uh, in the States, which is much larger, the nutrient efficiency tools. And some of us have tried these or have heard of these. Avail's been a product that Simplot's brought to the country quite a few years ago. It's been around, uh, no one really knew much about it, didn't really know how to use it effectively, so Verdesian actually has it and, and is using it a lot better. Nutrisphere is a brand new nitrogen stabilizer that's got a different chemistry from everything else out there. And so we're just starting to use that out here as well. And, and so uh, the team is, is starting to really look at that. So. Um, I'll start with the biological. So one of the things that we have is called accolade, and, and maybe some of you have tried it before. What this is is a biological that's either seed applied or you can put it into your liquid fertilizer and it's going to live. What it does is it induces endoacetic acid. So we've heard the word gibberellic acids. This is a sister molecule to that, and what it does is it just makes the plants produce roots. That's it. Simple as that. So. Um, doesn't care about what the FOSS levels are, doesn't care about what your pH is, so I still lost the jump start, or at least tried to. Um, it's a funny product, it works really well where it's supposed to work. With Accolade, it doesn't care about pH or anything like that. It's just a direct signal to the plant inducing this endoacetic acid response, and it just makes more roots. So it comes in a wonderful 10.4 liter jug, it's a bladder, it's, you know, it's a bitch. It's horrible, um, but, but it shook up. It's really nice to apply. Uh, you, like I said, it can do uh, seed applied. So on all the big seeded crops, um, you can do 117 bushels for a, for a case. Or uh, for canola, if you feel like ripping bags and treating, I know that, uh, I think you guys do that a bit, yeah, right? Treat, yeah. So you can do it that way, which is much easier. Or you can use it in furrow, and again, we've seen it on pretty much every crop. This year I'm going to be doing flax out of Regina, so that'll be new. But we've done lots of testing with corn, wheat, flax, uh, oats, and all that stuff. Compatibility is pretty strong. It's very compatible with most of the treatments out there. The only ones I caution is copper-based products, so copper is your death. So. Uh, you're looking at about 235 a bushel, so uh, you start playing with the math of what crop you're going to put this on, um, whether or not you want to uh, do it on seed, and if you are fortunate enough to have a liquid in furrow system, so your liquid in that type system, maybe that's the way to pay. So if you're going to put this on peas, uh, it's probably cheaper to put it in a liquid in furrow. So you're injecting it then? You can. Or you, can it in you can put it right in the mix, or you can buy a dose of Tron or whatever else. Yeah. So it mixes with uh, any like. What 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 is uh, you guys got? Where's Russell at? Like G twenty two is what we've been mixing it with. G twenty two twenty eight. You can do a Kugler. You can do ten thirty four. Anything here? What's up? You build mix with T and T there. T and T is dark. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Yeah. I just is not sure what the name of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've tested a lot of them with 2020 seed levels. We don't do, we don't have an in-house lab. We use third party. We feel that's best. And yeah, you put these in, and you're good for eight hours. I so, what's the survivability after eight hours? Start scumming up? No, no. I just don't want people going past eight hours. You're not getting the slime. No. No, none of that. So, tested that. Uh, I mean, I've had guys that have gone longer, but we don't want we don't want guys going longer than eight hours. Okay, uh, it's been a really good product. So uh, 
we, we go through different distribution networks, uh, but pretty much all independent agriculture uh, retails, and <coughs> we've sold out for the last two years, so it's been very, very popular. So, a really good money for the guys that are doing it. It's a very high ROI. So, again, lovely sun coming in here. You can't see the split fields, but on the far uh, side right here, you can see the plant roots. This is what you're going to see every time. It's just way, way, way more roots. Um, this is on a Brooks. Again, hard to tell, but this is untreated and then treated <laughs> that wasn't irrigated. You can see there's a very noticeable difference in the roots. If we were blessed to live in Carberry with nice deep soils, you'd, you'll still see the, the, the rooting there. So why is this very important to consider? Well, one, I like to consider one of the better drought mitigation tools out there. What we see is just massive rooting. So what do you get with massive rooting? You get more fibers, deeper roots, you're gonna find the water, you're gonna try to capture as much of uh, the nutrients as, that, are, that are in the soil that are um, you know, tied up or else you know, uh, solubilized. <coughs> so some of the guys that have guys buy um, Unity, Wilkie, Saskatchewan, they see this in their canola when they put this on the canola seed, they'll see it go straight down and then when the tap shuts off in July and August, they say it's, 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 it's not shallow rooted and you get that, that advantage. So uh, initially they thought Accolade is a, is a, is a, is a symbiotic uh, character where it makes its own nitrogen. That's not the case. It's actually finding more nitrogen, so that's why it's testing for more uh, soil test down. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, here's just a cross section of some of the yields we're getting on different crops. Corn in Manitoba, we're getting about a 10% a yield increase. Barley and swift current, this is a good indicator of how dirty bushels I wouldn't want to show, but you're doing really well because you're getting the water. So right there's a 10% 10, uh, 10 increase in yield. Uh, canola, we saw some, that was a tank mix of 2800, so we saw a two bushel bump. And really with the peas and, and some of the other uh, side treatments, <coughs> you get a, um, it's very tank mixable, very flexible with other product packages. So. And then 14 on oats. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, looking at lentils again, you're looking at uh, just the mass of rooting with it, and that's just typically what you see with this accolade. Primo GX2 is our granular formulation, so it's a rhizobia plus this accolade. So uh, if you've got tag team or nodulator duo, this is in that same class. So what we're doing is putting that rhizo the rhizobia product, the nitrogen fixing product, with the uh, accolade. So that's our multi-action. The nice thing about our product is it's the same clay as what you get with a tag team or a cell tech. Uh, same peat bog, in fact, but we double screen it. So the formulation is really nice to handle. So we'll get rid of the fines, we'll get rid of the big chunks, and it comes, um, we've never really had any clumping issues. So now, uh, We'll stand by that, but has anybody used this before, the GX2? No? Have you sold any? Yeah, but I uh, couldn't get it last year. Oh, right. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So last year we were a little yeah, short. I, 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 last year we were a little we short. We ordered it. Yeah. Oh, we ordered it. We're good now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's Sorry, see, I was trying to make you look better. He's just being an ass now, So yeah, this year we got a great supply. Last year we got we got severely shafted from the manufacturer, but that, that I digress. Um, we really have a lot of guys coming back to us and telling us that it's a really nice product to handle. The flowability is really good. So, uh, and then separate formulations for peas, lentils, or for, for pulses, and then for chickpeas have their own. Soybeans, and I didn't know this, but we have one for dry bean as well. So, anybody growing dry bean? No? Okay, I won't even talk about it then. So one thing that you talk about is the pounds per acre and how it's really important. So if you want to talk about how many live cells per gram or whatever it is, we're talking about CFU, so colony forming units per gram. Uh, so which is better, and this is a, this is a question that I kind of rushed through anyway, is if you have the same number of bugs per acre, it may look like eight pounds of granule worth half the half the bug count, or do you go with the more concentrated form where you have 
uh, more bucks per pellet and only half the rate. So if you if you think about it, the rhizobi or the bugs in the pellet are just like landmines. So the rhizobi don't move very far in the soil. The root has to find it. And so how do you better get better nodulation? Well, we're saying that if you go with double the, the number of, of uh, landmines in the way of the roots, you're gonna have a higher incidence of, of uh, forming a nodule. So if you look at the roots emerging from the plant, the incidence of hitting them is, is very evident. So page up. up, up. So that's kind of kind of what we see. So what what what, what relevance is that to, to you guys? So if you look at the formulations of, of what we got compared to some of our competitors, um, they're actually looking at they're recommending lower rates per pound or pounds per acre uh, to adjust to the price of what their, their product is per acre. Okay? So we're at the four pounds per acre typical rate, whereas they're at a three. So we're saying we're putting more landmines in the soil. Our concentration is still pretty high. They're saying, some of them are saying five times so you can reduce it. It doesn't make sense. So if you have um, less of those pellets in the way of the roots, there's gonna be less incidence of, ha of that having an infection. So no different than saying, well, I have a landmine here and if I step on it and it's got 100 sticks worth of dynamite, it's gonna blow up. Does it matter if it's a thousand sticks of dynamite? No, I'm still gonna die. So it's the same kind of premises with the pellet of a, of a granule. We have to have a minimum number of, of um, 100,000 live cells. We're guaranteeing a million. If they say five million, it doesn't matter. So we're saying that with our formulation, we're getting a higher pounds of granular per acre. And as a result, we typically have more wind because we're getting more nodulation. That azospirillium part, the other half of our stuff, also triggers more rooting, so we're finding more of those pellets as well. So the, the, the long and short of it is this. With our granular product, our flowability is really good. Typically we yield as good as or better than the competition. We have a higher pounds per acre, and then it's gonna cost you a lot less per acre. So, make sense? Any comments? The other thing that you'll wanna watch is your boron levels in the soil, because the IAA does yes. work with our boron. Sure. So you're trying to generate more, you can have even a better response if you've got good boron in the soil. Good point. So yes, always, and that's the big thing. Right now, what I'm saying here with a lot of this stuff is test your soils. Everybody's got to test their soils. Because if you got deficiencies, none of this stuff works as well as it should. So, big, big thing right there. So just a little bit of, a uh, little bit of in-start data around here. So. Like I said, we got P, uh, pulse formulation, soybean formulation. Anybody going to do soybeans this year? Nope. Well, okay, this is getting tough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to ask, but I don't why. All right. So um, we got somewhat of Clebat there. Where we, we're, again, we're against the big, big two or big three. Nodulator, tag team, we're in there. I mean, I'm going to show you the ones that we won for sure. Um, we do have ones that we were close or we didn't win at all. But like I said, Price-wise, flowability, performance, we typically are better, and it's gonna be a nice product to use and it's easy on the checkbook. Um, so I mean, okay. All right, any questions on inoculant, granular inoculant, powder inoculant? I didn't talk about powder because it's not really exciting at all. So. Well, what is the comparison? Uh, uh, the, you, you said you had a million, right? On, on the G22? Yeah. Um, what was the comparison to tag team or to? They're all ballpark. So we, what we do as manufacturers, and I mean I used to work for them too. They have a minimum guarantee, so it's like not, uh, well, some are like one times nine or one billion uh, live cells per gram. Um, to go and say it's two billion doesn't really make much. It's when you get one times ten to the eight, which is a hundred million, then, then that's by tenfold. So look at that. Don't look at 2x, don't look at 3x. It really is, they're guaranteeing a minimum. It doesn't mean I can't take a, a sample out of that bank, send it to 2020 and it, oh my God, it's 50 million, I don't know. You know, or 50 billion, sorry. It could be higher than that, but what they do is a minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. What you need is 100, 100,000 live cells. That's the, that's the minimum, minimum. And everybody's way higher than that, so. All right, 
Um, changing gears to the liquid product. So uh, our liquid product is called Entake, and it's nothing real special. It's rhizobi, it works. Um, the thing that um, we like to think about it is it's very flexible. So last year we had a different configuration altogether, and we had six little boxes in, in a case, and this year we changed it up so there's more little, four little ones but one big nice bladder so it's easy to apply and you can do that with them um, you can treat it all on the seat if you want but one thing that we like in our market is we go liquid and furrow so um we can do one case will do 60 acres so that that box about this big that 10 liter box replaces you know six or seven bags of granular so one storage is cool it's awesome because it's just one box instead of a bunch of little bags. Um, we also have a very um, uh, diligent system of testing for compatibility. So we were asking about sliming, doesn't slime. We've got all the testing done through 2020 and we've looked at all the uh, compatibility. If you're looking at an on-seat application still, it's still a good product. Um, and there are so there is a compatibility guide for it, so we do uh, look at the common ones out there. The only product I would say to stay away from on an on seed would be the uh, Insure Pulse. The carrier on it is very toxic, and there's not a lot of uh, inoculants out there that'll survive it. So, okay. Um, mixing it with products like the Avail, you can also put in that Accolade product that I talked about earlier. It works very well. Eight hours and no slime. Um, how does liquid and furrow compare to something on seed? So we've all been kind of told that liquid inoculants kind of crappy, right? Who's not heard that? All right. Um, it's kind of true. Liquid on seed isn't the best because you're going from these living organisms in, a, in an aqueous environment, so a water solution, they're floating around, they're ready to infect. Whereas a powder or a granular are very hardy, they're in a dormant state. They can take a hardship very well. So when we put it on a, on a seed, it's a very harsh environment. It's got natural defenses that ward against infection and that kind of thing, and it's dry. So it's flash drying it on the surface. With liquid and furrow, we're pushing uh, that, that same bug into from a liquid environment to a liquid environment. The ground should be moist enough, and that's considered a, an aqueous environment. Unless you're putting it in power, powder, it's not very good, but we're always pushing it into moisture, we hope. So how liquid and furrow works is we just create this solid band. So remember I had those uh, little granules spaced out like that? With liquid, you could have this band, just it's a solid curtain. Where's the roots going to go not to hit it? They're going to hit it every time. So for the last three years, we've been testing it and looking at it and saying, hey, this is pretty hot stuff. This is working really well. We're getting really good looking plants out of it. So that's why we're thinking liquid and furrow really works well. With that, we're, we, um, and maybe this is the result because we didn't have granular last year, but we're pushing liquid. We may be. But we've also have a program in place where uh, and maybe some of you have heard about this where we have a kit program. So all we're doing is we're saying, okay, if you want to get into the liquid game or if you want to improve the systems you have, go ahead, buy $3,000 worth of Verdesian products and I'll come back and I'll rebate you $5,000 in equipment up there. So we pay that back to you, the grower. It's between you and I. The retail doesn't have to get their hands dirty. But uh, all we look for is the invoices to support the, you know, the purchases of which, and then I go back and I give you product back for the cost of that. And I pay that back to you in two, 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 two uh, payments of product. So next year and the year before. So that's the program we have. So last year we had about 25 guys that took us up on it. We're all very happy with it. So any questions on that? Is this of any interest to anybody or? Okay. If anybody has questions after, please. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. So is that all you're putting into that uh, furrow, or do you uh, add a carrier or something? No. We well, you wouldn't put just an oculant in. Either you use water or liquid fertilizer. Yeah. You put your water. Yeah. yeah because okay. you're gonna need right. you're gonna need a lot of volume of about. Oh, well, some guys are saying so. Patterson kits. I think they were saying. There's no way you can do it without going less than three and a half, four gallons. 
of, of some kind of carrier. The orifice size is too small if you go lower than that. And then you're running a dosatron. And then the dosatron is the other means of doing it too, yes. You could do the dosatron, I think it's such a small amount. You do both, so yes, yes. our dosatron works on our Yes, and the dosatron is geared to, yeah, to help with that. So yeah, and the dosatron is really nice because yeah, you can just fill your tank with your fertilizer and then the dosatron has just your biologicals in there. And, and guys that have put them in there and it's a nice sealed system, they're done for the day. I wouldn't worry about it. It's sealed. It's, it's pretty, pretty uh, uh, septic that one too. So try to use up as much as you can, but yeah. So yes, we have that program. Uh, just kind of a cross section of how liquid and furrow costs compared to granular. So if you were to look at um, like our intake liquid, and you're looking at about six ninety one an acre. Compare that to the Celtec, which is ballparking of about 921. You're saving quite a bit right there by using liquid. And then even for the price of the granular, you can start adding things like the Accolade, and you're you're right in there. So you can mix that with Accolade. Yeah. Like you add anything. Yeah. Right in there. Everything's very very compatible. Yes. So if you use liquid plus granular. Uh huh. Would it be more money, or the same amount of money than using the competitors only granule? Well, I, would I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't waste time going with the liquid in furrow and a granular, or are you talking liquid on the seed and a granular in furrow? Yeah. Double dot thing. Yeah. Uh, I'd say save your money and don't go something on seed. Just use the granular. Or do two liquid. You can do on seed and in pearl. You could, yeah, especially on, well, on virgin ground. So like we've got chickpea guys that haven't seen chickpeas in a while. Some of them are gra grabbing a, an inoculum for the seed and then something in the furrow. And that's still quite a bit cheaper than full rate uh, granular. Does, is that kind of the scenario you were wondering? Okay, yeah, it depends a little bit on the crop too. Yeah. What about peas? Peas, well, I mean, if you've had them there in the last five, four or five years, mm, well, it wouldn't hurt, I guess. I'd feel better with the powder, to be honest. Powder and then the liquid and furrow. Yeah. Yeah, or powder and then a granular. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it a different way. Yeah. Feet, yeah. Yeah. See, liquid on the seed, I'm not 100% not sold on it, but there's, there's, there's cheaper, better ways. Unless you get a polymer to extend the life. Yeah, well, that's. But even with the polymer on a liquid pulse, I've. You still got limited window. Uh, okay. I would say so, because your time on seed is compromised, and if you're going to invest on that, you might as well do a powder and a polymer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, there's so many combinations, so. Anyway, um, so. I don't know why I have this corn slide in here. But this is a picture of Accolade and Avail. So Avail is our FOSS treatment, and I think that's where I gotta go next. Okay, so Accolade, um, or what Avail does is it protects the phosphorus from binding in the soil, all right? So we kind of heard about that, right? Um, what the Avail, Accolade is doing is providing the root network to find these nutrients, to find the phosphorus that's held in place for you. So we did get a bit of a, uh, of a bump there, and uh, that was in Surus, Manitoba. So a lot of our products, so uh, this, sorry, it's kind of coming in right in the middle of the presentation, but we do have a guarantee. So for a lot of our systems and our products out there, we feel very strongly about them and we actually have a performance guarantee. So um, if we're talking about liquid and furrow, we're talking about even our granular versus a competitor, I'll get into the avail and a little bit into the Nutrisphere in a bit. But if, if, we, if you guys want to try something and you want a guarantee behind it, we do have that in place. So it's as simple as this. A person goes online, clicks the link, and we set up a, 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 the, the, the trial or whatever with you online. We look at the, the parameters that are involved. So if, it depends on what product you're using and what you want to test. But basically, if we agree that this is a good test to look at, We'll set it up so that we go and flag that field for you and then when it comes time to harvest so that you're not messing around all i want you to do is take a picture of side a versus b and if they're if we don't pay then i rebate your product so we put our money where our mouth is so the the thing with that is too 
Um, we can use yield maps. We encourage you guys to do weigh wagons, but we know how, how it is in the fall. You just want to get that done. And hopefully you see something in the course of the year. So this is our guarantee. Oh, there's our rate card. So any questions on the inoculant side? No? I got cards here if you guys have got questions later, but I'll be around after. Okay, so another thing that we have is lift kit, and so this is, let me expand that here. So this is a new product we're just testing this year, well, I've tested it before. And this is a liquid, in, oh, you can't see it, that's why. Let me get down there. Still on. New. Well, actually, there's one component that's very new. So this is something for the people doing the liquid inferno. So this is a copac. Uh, it's got that acolyte in there. It's got the intake liquid uh, inoculant in there, and then we throw in a, a product called Ratio in there. Uh, Ratio is a very interesting technology in the sense that it's it's uh, it's a new it's a nitrogen not a stabilizer but a nitrogen um, assimilation tool. But what I mean by that is it's making more nitrogen come out of the soil, making more nitrogen come out of the nodules. So we get nodules on the plants that last longer and work harder during the course of the year. Um, one of the one of the what it is is the catalyst or a reaction in the plant that makes more uh, oxyproline which converts unavailable N to a usable form so we're getting more protein and more carbon put into the plant so as a result we're getting higher plant tissues with protein we're getting more yield more building blocks everything you want out of that uh, does out of, that work with alfalfa yes yes so this product is registered just for pulses right now so we're and, and into this form. Hopefully next year we have a few more products that we can do as as a fully applied product. So protein and alfalfa, yes, it would work. Um, protein and cereals, we've been doing studies on that. We definitely see yield out of all of those. So um, the availability of nitrogen in cereals really has a protein effect. But if there's nothing that's top trust, you're just going to see a yield response. So in pulses and soybeans, we definitely have this in, a, in some of our formulations. We do see it in pulp and in our soybeans, we see at least a 1% increase in protein on the, on the soybeans. And then this year we're doing more field work with our, pulp, uh, with our pulses because we've got more processors around, well, Saskatoon for sure, that are looking at protein premiums on peas. So we have this product into this mix. So um, it's called Ratio. So it's three products in one, and uh, and you know, and this is kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing far more robust plants. Hopefully, it results in yield. Uh, Primo GX2 would be our granular formulation with both the nitrogen and that accolade part. Um, so it's working really well. Again, another product that's really good for a liquid and furrow system. Compatibilities there. It runs you about, if you're doing liquid and furrow, I think it was 10 bucks an acre. So it's still better than some of the granular multi-actions, but we're actually triple. And we have a guarantee on that. So if you want to see what it does in the field, we have a guarantee for it as well. That was the Ag in Motion site, this one? This was Ag in Motion, so you can take that data, if you will, however you want to do it. Yeah. It's not Did that get hailed there? Too? Yeah, it got hailed. This is probably for it. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't watered either. No. Somewhere. So anyway, so that's just one tidbit. That was one thing you you wanted me to touch on was these lift kits. So yep. not a bad product out there. Okay. Let's go to Nutrisphere. So actually let's go to the hill first. Oh, 
All right. So we've had the rundown of how important phosphorus is. You see that? Cool. Um, when I when I tell a crowd about what phosphorus does, it's plain plain and simple. It's energy for a plant. Without phosphorus and without energy, you don't have the power to move forward with anything. So it's a key part of everything that's involved with how anybody or anything in the world is growing. So if you don't have phosphorus, you don't have energy, you don't have yield, you don't have early root development, you don't have plant health, you don't have the resistance to fend off disease or anything. So it's so key. And it's very unfortunate that it's one of the most unattainable products or uh, nutrients in our soil. So of what we apply, and what's available in the soil is very, very small. So they say about 10 to 30 percent of what you apply, you, you may see in your plant in the form of yield. So, um, and that's simply because most of the phosphorus that we add is tied up with the cations. So positively charged um, ions in the soil that attract to the phosphorus, bind it and keep it there, and not have it available for the plant at that immediate time. Eventually, some of it does become available, but that's time and that's that's the changing chemistry of your soil. So, um, speaking of chemistry, there are key parts of that too that we have to concern ourselves, and that's the, the soil pH. So when we talk about soil pH, and we talk about the relative availability of phosphorus, anywhere is around that six to six five, that's when the highest amount of phosphorus is available in the soil. Um, it doesn't mean that there's more phosphorus available to your crop. It's all about saturation in the soil. So if we have low testing P saturation, that means, well, there's no P to be had. It's typical in sandy soils. Clay soils have a high P, but that doesn't mean it's exactly going to be available to your plant. So where Avail steps in is Avail is a long polymer chain. So what we're doing is we're treating fertilizer and I'll get to, there's two forms, there's liquid and then there's dry. We're treating our phosphorus and it's coating that phosphorus, that phosphorus molecule and preventing it from binding to these cations, these things that tie it up. What happens is the plant root exudase shoots out a, 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 an acid that breaks down this chain and it cleaves it off. And that's why it's kind of a slow release product out in the soil. So we're extending the availability of that phosphorus throughout the growing year. And we say typically you're looking at about 30%, okay? So <coughs> how does it work? Again, phosphorus interacts with your, your positive ions, so we're reducing that fixation of the pea in the soil, keeping it from being bound, all right? Um, the result is more available pea throughout the, the, the growing season. Again, plants break down these chains of these polymers, makes it available through the year. All right, um, how do I apply it or where does it work well? So okay, there's two forms like I said. There's an avail liquid, one that you can just dump into your liquid fertilizer, works very well, doesn't settle, doesn't take much mixing, the other is applying it to granular fertilizer. So it's a liquid as well, but we just, we, we can put it through a blender, we've had guys do it through augers, it works well. These are water-based polymers too, so um, they do not stick very well, like your fertilizer will not stick hardly at all, I haven't seen it stick yet. And you treat your fertilizer first and if you're making a blend then you add the other ingredients after you mix your avail in. Alright, um, pretty low use rates, we're doing about uh, one case does 995 US gallons of liquid product. And for our dry site, one case does 900 ton, or 900 ton, 9 metric ton of dry. And that could be of any dry foss, it could, and, uh, it could be like S15, it could be uh, uh, 1152, it could be triple foss. Uh, for liquids, it can be 1034, it could be G22, it could be Kugler stuff, it could be whatever. So they all work on it. Um, where are you going to see the biggest uh, return on, on your investment for this product? So we've come up with this nice little table that shows you exactly where you're going ex to expect a, a, a good response. So if you have a soil that's about 6.5 and you're, te you're, te you're testing about oh, 15 to 20 ppm of available phosphorus, this might not be a product for you. 
outside that realm where you got a really uh, acidic soil or a really basic soil and you're testing low on FOSS, available FOSS, then this is going to be a really good product. So anybody here in the, in the sweet zone where you probably won't have to use this, where it's about 6.5? Okay. I got guys that got so much phosphorus in their soil. We don't have to use it. Don't and don't <laughs> use it. So with our guarantee, this is some of the things that I'm talking about. If you if this is something that you want to try out and we want to enter this in a guarantee, this is a very good thing to talk about. What are you testing for FOSS? If it's high, don't use it. I'll save you a dollar. So where to use a bale to some of the things that we have to consider. Now, if you are very short on phosphorus, it's gonna help you because it's gonna maximize what your plants are gonna take. If you're, if you're okay, or if you're looking at short-term game as far as I don't wanna invest in this land, or I'm thinking of selling it in a year, or you're renting, if you're looking at cutting corners, doesn't matter if it's our product or whoever's, if it's nitrogen or, 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 or FOSS, it please use the stabilizer if you're looking at trimming your nutrient use. Stabilizers, including ours, theirs, whoever's, are there to, to make more of less, being efficient. So this is some of the things that we're looking at as far as where you would consider uh, using a stabilizer like a veil. Okay, and then of course we got to be very conscious of the environment, and uh, it's a big, big deal in, in the U.S. for sure. So um, I guess ballpark, what's the cost? So if a person's doing liquid and for uh, liquid avail and they're looking at maybe, well I think it was five gallons of liquid per acre, uh, adding the avail was probably um, around five bucks an acre. Uh, with uh, dry, I think it's 30 pounds of actual, or, oh no, it's 60 pounds of product is about five bucks of FOSS. So that's, that's where you're looking at. This. Just some more data. Again, uh, this is Manitoba showing different levels of FOSS data. This is in Minto. So going with no FOSS, then to 74 pounds of P205, and then 74 with the veil, uh, you expect to see an increase in yield. What these percent plant P are showing is the different dates of when we took uh, plant tissue samples. So you can see as we increase the FOSS and making it more available at the early stages, you're getting more tissue sample or more tissue FOSS in the sample. And then even at later dates, so maybe the bolting stage when they took that sample, it's still a higher number uh, testing on, on, on how much FOSS is going in. So this product obviously is putting something into the plant. Um, U of A um, barley, this was up north, and that's using two different types of, uh, of the fertilizer. Uh, 30 pounds of P205, you got an 8 bushel bump on barley. Um, one thing I must comment on, on how avail works and how phosphorus is, is uh, the relationship in canola versus other crops, is the other crops tend to have a really high response in that, and sometimes it's because we treat those crops like garbage. So, or we treat them good, but we just are very scared to be hurting them. So with, with in some of my situations in Ontario, um, you get a big response because FOSS is, a high de is in very high demand in that crop. Uh, I think it's a bushel for every pound of available pea. So we're getting a really big response in there. With pulses, we're scared of putting down too much down the pipe and having that nitrogen kick out the rhizobia. So we do, see have, we do have some monstrous results in, in, the, in the pulses and in, 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 uh, adding the veil to the, and that was adding it to G22. Um, with, with the inoculant. So, um, Cavalier is a retail that we have up in the Northwest. They've done an extensive study for the last couple of years. Uh, in the end, it averaged about three bushels an acre on Kanoa on, a, on a, about a 50 bushel crop, and they're saying it's about a five to five to six percent increase on yield. So, that's the ROI in that. So, that would be a pH of anywhere from five to six five, and having um, a moderate amount of uh, available pea, so that's a high acid soil typically. So again, this is why you see pictures like this with yields like this, is because the avail is being held for the, the crop to have it, and then the accolade is moving into, making the roots find these nutrients in the soil. So it's a real nice 
uh, complement to each other. Again, this is something we're all okay. I thought about that there. So yeah, we got the equipment program, and we have the performance guarantee. So, any questions on that? I got just one more little one, mm -hmm. and then you can go possibly dismiss. <laughs> All right, so like I mentioned, we have a stabilizer. And Dr. and Abdel were just talking about this prior, but we have stabilizers in, in the industry. And as of recent, we had, uh, sorry, we had Nutrisphere, which is our paid job. And Nutrisphere, right now, the one we have registered is just for, um, for dry fertilizer. We had a liquid one and one for anhydrous. And the, 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 this one here, this Nutrisphere for dry, uh, is one we just registered right now or just got re-registered. So CFI re-evaluated all the stabilizers and, and plant growth regulators and stuff. And so this is the one we got registered. We do have them in the US. We had them last year for, for anhydrous and for liquid. And uh, they work really well, but we just got this one registered in time. So if you see a slide talking about liquid or dry, uh, liquid or anhydrous, it's there, it's not registered, and I can't sell it to you. So what makes Nutrisphere special? Um, not so much special as what it does, is, is we lose nitrogen in three ways, voltization, leaching, and denitrification. So how Nutrisphere works is it's a long chain uh, formulated to attract ammonia, as well as nickel, copper, and iron, which are very integral in the biological process. So some of those state, those processes where we, where we have nitrogen converting from one form to the next, some of those stabilize out there to either kill a bacteria or in our case, pull an essential um, uh, element that's used in that synthesis of going from one, one form to the next um, and then and holding it with these, with these polymers. So, uh, we are stabilizing that nitrogen to be available, protecting it from either going in leaching or voltization uh, to a lesser extent to the um, denitrification. Um, that's the denitrification side is where they're, they're binding a copper or, or sorry, a nickel, or they're impeding a biological that uses that so that it's not converted to an unusable form. So, so, Oh, that gets too technical. But basically, it's a high, um, um, it's a high CEC product, which has a high cation exchange relative to the cell chemistry. So that's part of what it is. Um, polymers are relatively stable, so they um, it's a very large, <coughs> three thousand gigamoles. What is that? Grams per mole. Sorry. Yeah. And so these polymers are, are, are applied as a coating or in a solution. So what they're doing is they're, co they're covering the nitrogen molecule and keeping it from destabilizing, protecting it. Uh, and both, there is, well, like I said, there's, there's different forms. There's one for liquids, one's for anhydrous, and one's for, for, for dry. So the one I'm going to talk about, uh, there you are, is the Nutrisphere QDO. So quick, dry, orange. So just some of the, the attributes about it, again, like our avail, it's a water-based polymer. It dries extremely fast. I did some last week in, in central Saskatchewan. It, applying it to the, to the urea, it was dry in like less than 30 seconds. Uh, it doesn't stink. Um, and actually you can take a handful of it after a minute and nothing is sticking to it. It's impregnated very, very well. So, and it has uh, a unique orange color to it. So, QDO, quick dry orange. So, um, what you're also looking at is for more of it being fed into the crop. Okay, no, sorry. So, you do get a lot of canopy closure in your crops uh, just because it is a healthier crop. More of that nitrogen is being sustained and carried throughout the course of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. Comparing it to the other ones, they are saying here in grain protein, well, I need to judge that. Let's see if it yields first, but um, 
Yeah, if you have a longer retention of your nitrogen, yeah, it's going to help and, and hopefully into your protein. So that's with, uh, let's see about that. In the States, again, with the core uh, corn trials, again, corn's a big user. We're saying we get about 90% wins. Um, typically, they're saying about 10, 10, 10 bushel increase. Well, that's maybe only a 5% yield increase. Um, yeah, so uh, last year, this last year was the first year we demoed it in, in Canada. Uh, it looked fairly good. Um, we had it in canola, we had it in wheat, and we saw about a 5% increase in yield. So it's right in there with most of the other stabilizers. The key points about it is we're triple, we're, we're controlling the three losses of, 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 uh, of nitrogen loss. Uh, the other thing too that's about us is we're a water-based copolymer, so we're not the typical chemistry that you have with other stabilizers. And the other thing too is it's extremely easy to apply. Um, we would compare to, uh, um, we don't compare to the other ones where we don't clump up and it's really nice to, to handle after. It doesn't, um, if it's like Agritain, you should be using it after a certain amount of, of, of well, weeks or months after you apply it. With ours, it can sit in the bin for 18 months. Um, comparing it to the actual efficacy compared to say Super U, where it's, it's relatively expensive, it's nice because you buy it, it's already done, same thing with ESN, but we're a lot cheaper than say the Super U and, and we do the same things as it can do, so. Okay. Again, it's on the, it's on the guarantee as well, so. Any questions on that? Sorry, I kind of raced through that. Yeah. Yes. Can you apply it on farm? Yes. So with, with an auger. <coughs> yeah. So a little use rate, one case. So it's two 10 liter jugs or two 9.46 liter jugs. Um, two 2.1 liters per metric ton. But yeah, it mixes really nice. You'll be hard pressed to find any buildup on it at all because it's water based. And it's got that nice color too that it works. You can see it right there. Cost per ton? Cost per ton. Harv asked me this yesterday. I think, don't quote me on this. Well, you, you can if you're gonna. But, um, <laughs> one, 105 to 110 a ton. So it's cheaper than, it's not as cheap as, say, an Agritain, but it's definitely better than Super U. I haven't seen the prices yet. You have them, but you just don't know where they are. Yeah, I know where I am. I couldn't find it because I got a million in my head. Yeah. But that's, I remember telling Harv that yesterday about 105 to 110, somewhere in there. Any questions other than that? I, like I said, I got cards and stuff. I will be around, so if you got questions. Yeah. A dollar here and two dollars there, two dollars here. Five bucks, five bucks, price, right? Price for grain to shits. <laughs> this stuff isn't from China, is it? Because these guys ain't gonna really. No, by the way, it's not China. No, that's right. We're we're made in America. I mean, that's sort of a okay. <laughs>